Yeah, makes up a purple smell with blessed beats. Today we're gonna do a little bit of a different thing. We're gonna analyze some drum beats, some rhythms, some grooves, if you will, by Jay Dilla, every producer's favorite producer. We're gonna take a look at Welcome to Detroit this time around. I know a lot of people's favorite is donuts or some other shit, but this one is my favorite so i'm gonna start off with that one then maybe if you like this type of analysis we might look into some other faves as well you know what i'm saying maybe your fave before we conduct this highly scientific science project let me underline that uh, really not much point in doing this there's always a debate there's always been a debate trying to crack the code of dilla's drums or whatever there's vox or vice or whoever the fuck made it made some breakdown of it some motherfucker wrote a whole book about it my thing is in general i think we're over analyzing him people are saying that he was so quiet he didn't share his uh, secrets or whatever they frame it in that way i think here my humble theory and anybody who makes beats for a while they would probably also intuitively agree with me that he put it very well in his own words he just goes on the field how i feel for the day you know what i'm saying it's like quantizing for example is just one minor detail it is a tool that we can use whenever we want to i don't think he always quantized his drums i don't think he always did not quantize his drums sometimes he might have quantized a snare sometimes he don't quantize a snare it's just about the feel and the groove and if you listen to enough music if you make enough music you'll realize that every single element rhythmically both melodies and drums and percussion they tie together and the wholeness of it creates a groove you know what i'm saying not even the just the drums alone tied together always sound like a very nice groove it is when you add a bass line to it that is like uh, lagging behind a little bit and sample of some chords that is also lagging uh, even more behind so it forms like a chain of lagging behind that the, the drums are are pulling you know what i'm saying for example everything is like a spider web connecting the group together and i think not only for him but mo most musicians you don't even think about that that meticulously you don't analyze where do you put it you just this pocket feels right you know what i'm saying that is my theory it's just a wild guess you know what i'm saying don't be mad i think still it's interesting to have a look at some grooves so we're gonna do that today here i meticulously recreated the drum, drum grooves another disclaimer of course it's a lot about which drum sounds you're using too i just loaded up a rack here in in ableton Live. And I use the same drums on all of them. So never mind that. What we're interested in today is the groove of these beats. Let's start off with Y'all Ain't Ready because track number one, not so much drums in it. You know what I'm saying? So obviously a big deal about Dilla's drums is they are a little bit off beat. I don't think they are off beat. They're just catching special little pockets, but something that new beat makers do, noobs when they're coming out, is to either overdo it with the sloppiness so it's just nothing is hang nothing is tied together, or they are underdoing it so everything is too stiff, you know what I'm saying? And I think Dilla is listen to enough beats of him and just try to soak in the feel of the drums, of the grooves in there, and the drummers, of course, that he was inspired by, you will be better with time. So something that's very common here, First of all, this and a couple of other beats on this album has the four to the floor kick that is not 100% common in hip hop, you know what I'm saying? And then if we take a look here, this is a shaker right now. But it sounds like it's a hi-hat sample with four hits on the hi-hat and he's just triggering it. If ever you find a sample like that on a record, that is a very good thing to do because if you slow it down just so it's not exactly on time, you'll find the special groove in here. We have four 16th notes in this here one bar. If we would trigger every single hi-hat on it, it might look something like that. And, and it lags behind a little bit more every time it's triggered because it is slowed down and it's not perfectly lined up with the rhythm. So you're just triggering the hi-hat with these four hi-hat hits every quarter note. And of course, every single one of these hits is not exactly on the dot on the rhythm neither. So it creates a nice little groove. Also, the snare and the kick, they never hit exactly here. 
here is pretty d darn close, you know what I'm saying? But that's the only place where it's really... But it still sounds very nice. Why? Because it's tied together with this rolling hi-hat sample. And also, notice this little clap here. This you can use a lot to high effect. If there's a clap and that you're gonna dub a snare with, never put it exactly where the snare is. Put it a little bit before or a little bit after. Like this one has this nice little gun cocking effect type thing, you know what I'm saying? Small details like that, scooting it a little bit backwards or forwards, you know what I'm saying? Other than that, having a look at the hi-hats, this, this is something that also a lot of uh, uh, noobs do overdo a little bit. This one is slightly behind. It's almost into, you know, thirds territory over there. It's not very common for Dilla Beats to be into the thirds territory. Usually it's a little bit more behind the hi-hat and the, the every second hi-hat lags behind a little bit more than the first. So typical, maybe like that and then repeat. That is like an average hi-hat groove for Dilla. So this one, it's actually very late, almost going into the thirds territory. But we still don't get that A lot of people say this is a Dilla inspired beat and it's That's not common at all for Dilla. You're overdoing it with making the hi-hat lag, you know what I'm saying? Why this works is because this rolling hi-hat is the predominant driver of the groove while this one is tiny ghost hi-hats in the background that's barely barely audible also these sloppy but not too sloppy i should say let's move on to the next joint that is think twice very smooth joint this one has a ride instead of a hi-hat also very straightforward pattern matter of fact we could put it right there and everything is going to sound the same this one is pretty on beat just slight little differences slight little air spots you know what i'm saying here as the bar goes around to the second bar, you can still hear that it's, it's, it has a human groove, but it's very tight, you know what I'm saying? And what this one, uh, how this one puts the slop funk in it, if you will, is with the bass and the sample. A lot of the songs is like that. Sometimes the drums are very spare, or even the drums are pretty on beat, but it's the samples and the bass that is lagging behind. You could put the bass so far behind. If you could visualize it where I triggered the first bass, it's probably here. It's like after the kick is rung out. We have a rim shot instead of a snare here. It's just kick, snare, kick, snare, or kick, rim shot. And we're also emphasizing this here. Emphasize with a little shaker. Very stylish. Now the clapper, this one, this one is a little bit more experimental, if you will. Yeah, this one right here is interesting. There's a couple of claps in it. See, these two are claps right here. Also, the snare is running all the time. The snare is hitting on the three and the four, and it has a little ghost snare right here before it, if you can see that detail. Also, a little ghost snare in between there. Here again with the claps, they're never on quite the exact same spot. They're a little bit shifted to the left or the right earlier or later, you know what I'm saying? Especially when you have many claps or snaps, you can have a pretty nice effect with this. But actually, it is the snare underneath it all that is dictating it. It's, it's a little bit more forceful cutting through, you know what I'm saying? Rhythmically wise, while these claps going on, are, they're just causing this natural, um, Chaos, you know what I'm saying? And what's interesting about this is that 
the pattern doesn't really repeat exactly the same throughout. We have some consistency in here, and that is mainly the snare, you know what I'm saying? The hi-hats, they're uh, pr pretty playful, you know what I'm saying? Something you can do a lot with drums is um, play around with the velocities. Never use just straight hard hits like this all throughout, but be playful a little bit with the accents and with the dynamics of every drum sound. Overall, it is a playful rhythm. You can, you can always be playful with drum patterns as long as they have some sort of consistency when it comes to the repetition, you know what I'm saying? As long as something is repeating within two quarter notes or like half a bar or a, even a whole bar, you can make something pretty crazy as long as it loops around there and it won't be too out there, you know what I'm saying? Just make sure that there's some sense of rhythm to it. And these claps and the snares, they're never on the exact same spot. They're trying to hit the same spot. My guess, my guess right here is that it was probably recorded completely without the quantization if we're, if we need, if we're gonna go there. And again here, this on its own sounds a little bit chaotic, but the bass line alone, plus the sample, ties it together very nicely. Let's have us look at the next one. Come get it with Elzai, one of my favorite lyrical, miracle, spiritual type of rappers. You know what I'm saying? This one's drum beat is a little, it's pretty straightforward. Just look at it. Disproving the point that I just made that it's not common for Dilla to have bordering on triplet hi-hats. This one has a very lenient, is that a, that a word? Leaning. You know what I'm saying? So this one does have that limping hi-hat. And what is very special about this one is that this is something I've done on hundreds of beats. The snare is just very early. So you get this. And second thing about this, pay attention to the kick drum pattern where we have a repetition on the third bar and the fourth bar. Something to learn from this, when you're making kick drum patterns in general, you don't wanna have like 16 bars where the kick drums are, uh, the patterns are different all over the place. But within four bars, this is a good rule of thumb, I find, in general, for what feels good for t uh, beats, kind of beats like this. Just a couple of repetitions. It doesn't matter if it, the repetition occurs on bar one and bar three, or bar two or bar and bar four like it does here. Here the variation happens in these two. And that's just enough, that is just enough consistency for it to not feel all over the place. Let's move on to Pause by Frank and Dank. This one, this beat is hard. I wish I could play the whole thing back. <laughs> Take a sip. Yeah, this beat is fucking one of my all time favorites. It has this ostinato thing if you listen to it, the, the little cricket thing. Uh, the sample that goes. That one does a lot for tying the rhythm together. It does a lot for the whole character of the beat. And what is very nice about these uh, one note, this is something that Dilla does a lot too, is that it might be a string that lays consistently over the whole thing, just like me, just one tone. This is this one tone ostinato that adds both rhythm and the flavor to it, you know what I'm saying? So let's look at the drum pattern right here. The kicks and the snares are pretty dead on, except this one right here has some swing. You can you can notice the swing right there. Otherwise, it's pretty straightforward, pretty dead on, you know what I'm saying? And what does the majority of the whole feel in the groove is number one, the shaker, and then the other samples. Same goes for Big Booty Express. It is the synthesizer 
that does a lot for the rhythm in it and the the beat is actually pretty i mean the drum pattern is four to the floor kicks and hi-hats that are not dead on but fairly so you would see if we would quantize this it would look like that and it looks like there's very little movement there little correction but that it fucks up the whole feel. Those minor... The bass, the synthesizer bass is uh, not at all locked into it, but it's still, it's, it's still consistent all the time. The bass synth rhythm is off. It is not quantized at all but it's it always repeats and lands in the exact same pockets and the drum beat is very simple it's just like that and this one is pretty similar to to the hi-hat pattern i was talking about before where it's just it's just one hi-hat uh, sample with four hits in it triggering this is kind of the same effect if you would take this one hi-hat with four straight ones like that now imagine that we are pitching it down what will happen? They would spread more and more apart, right, 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 right? And that would result in having this nice swing to it because it still repeats on every beat. So it doesn't sound too off. But if you go across one bar or two bars and it becomes more and more off, that's when you're, that's when our brain just can't register that funk anymore it just becomes a mess you know what i'm saying hopefully that makes sense any hi-hat pattern we could have it like like that even more off and it should be all right if we repeat it see now this one is tripping even more over itself but it's still makes sense to our brain because it repeats frequently enough gotta love it let's take a look at beach in them something like that this one is very straightforward and again i'm disproving my own point because this one has uh the lazy hi-hats but this is a little bit more closer to typical dilla territory this is about the spacing that uh, usually goes on or many times goes on within one beat of a bar you know what i'm saying the hi-hat lags behind a little bit more and then on the next bar it's pretty dead on but not exactly And here on, on this one, also, the hi-hats are responsible for almost the whole swing because the kick and the snare are pretty straight. Let's have a listen to another section when it gets started and the kick drums get a little bit more frequent. I love those types of kick drum patterns, you know what I'm saying? What it, it, it just it hits you with that double hit in the beginning. It's not straight. We're going in a little bit earlier than that. So we get the boom, 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 boom. Very nice. Other than that, not too much more to say about that. Brazilian groove. This one is actually one of the more loose ones on the entire album. Lots of kicks, lots of ghost kicks there. And this shaker thing, which is not actually a shaker in the real song, uh, really does a lot for the looseness. And this one is just, uh, it, it's, check the rim shot out. They're pretty consistently landing just a tiny bit after the beat. So they are responsible for that steady foundation. But the hi-hat and the shaker they're just throwing their titties out, you know what I'm saying? 
Sometimes it's like, sometimes it's like, sometimes it's like, and also in general, the hi hats are lagging behind a little bit. It, one is a very simple thing you can do if you're making a drum beat and you just want to add a little bit more feel to it. You don't even need to be more complicated than keeping the kicks and the snares where they are and just scooting the hi-hats back just a tiny bit like this, you know what I'm saying? So this one, if it's dead on, it's like that. Just grab all of your hi-hats, scoot them back a little like that. Already you're going to have a much nicer feel to your drum beat and this even goes for not only for like funky hip-hop like this even trap beats even uh, afro beat is very important any genre that has typically has pretty dead on quantized drums just adding a tiny bit of that funk is gonna make the beat set itself apart you know what i'm saying it's like that featuring hodgepodge and lax Also very nice one. This one is also a very simple pattern. It's pretty straight, but here again, the hi-hats are pretty much almost exactly in the same spot. We have the, the kick drum again, four to the floor on the kick drum and the kicks and the snares rim shot in this case are almost dead on. Something to pay attention to here is the velocity of the hi-hats, it has a certain pattern to it that it follows. It's... All the time. And the hi-hats are almost in the same place as a couple of the other tracks here. Just sl slightly behind on every second hit. You can go so far with just that. Another one of the nastiest beats, one of my all-time favorite Dilla beats. Give it up. This is the perfect amount of s slop for me here again kicks and snares are pretty damn close hitting the mark there i mean some of them are a little bit slightly off but not by much something that's interesting in this you should listen to the original and listen closely to the drum pattern on that because on the samples the snare Number one, there's a couple of different snare samples and I think that he is using one snare sample from the record that goes this little brr. If you come across samples like that, the little drum roll, not really a drum roll, but just that tiny bit of when you're just letting your hand go limp on the snare drum, so it goes brr. So I think what's going on on this original beat is that the sample played all the way, all throughout, sounds like it has this little thing in the end but it he doesn't let it play all the way out on every hit just every second hit so it goes like like that you know what i'm saying also there's this tambourine thing might be part of the same drum sample but if it's not uh, it is reversed so it's split into two different different samples one is the tambourine hit and one is the tambourine hit reversed. And it goes something like this when you look at this. And there's no hi-hats in it, no nothing, just kicks and snares. Again, are very almost straight on the beat. But what brings the most part of the funk in this one is the bass, the sloppy bass. Something like that, but even more funky. Rico Suave Bossa Nova, this one right here. It is a Bossa Nova. You can tell he had fun with making some Bossa Nova rhythms with this one. Here with the hi-hats, Fairly consistent within a bar, you know what I'm saying? Something like this. They're all slightly off every here and there. And on 
beat number three in one bar, they're a little bit more behind. And on beat number four in a bar, they're even a little bit, little bit more behind before it loops around. So yeah, the kicks are pretty straight. The snares also, it has that bossa nova pattern. And also when you're doing something like this, again, the dynamics, the velocities of the drum hits are very important. So the hi-hats are never consistently on the same velocity. There's movement in it. Another fave, all of these are my faves, but featuring Fat Cat. We have another one of these where you should recognize this uh, hi-hat pattern by now. This snap right here is actually a uh. So yeah, that one, that's interesting because I think that does a lot for the rhythm also, where it's placed. And it doesn't loop around. It doesn't uh, ever show up in the same place within these four bars. So that does a lot for it. Also, the hi-hats in this one is following the good old rule, you know what I'm saying? Except for that on the second beat and uh, on every second beat in the bar, the hi-hat is slightly before also. And it's pretty consistently also throughout the second beat. Uh, I mean, the second hit in every beat is slightly behind, like in a lot of the other drum patterns. Also, snare, again, a little bit earlier than on the twos and fours. And this one also, if you're a complete beginner, if you're following up a kick with a snare or another kick like that, generally it's almost, almost rule to lower the velocity so you get a pre-kick or a ghost kick before the next drum sound comes in. It's gonna make it sound much more natural and nice. Let's proceed to shake it down. Yep, 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 yep. Look at you, look at you, what you do? Yeah, shake it down. This one is a lot about this interplay with the with, with the hi hat and the shaker. Kick and and this uh, layered snare with a rim or something else there in the background. Kick, snare, kick, snare. Kick and snare not going to bananas, but what is having fun in here in these patterns is the hi hat and the shaker back and forth thing you know juggling having a little bit of fun here and there so i think the key lesson from this drum beat right here if you're gonna have something that's totally nuts and very inconsistent like this relatively inconsistent keep the other elements the other drum hits pretty straightforward african rhythms the feel in this one is so human it's hard to even pin it down there's not not really a repeating formula to it uh, it's even changing form a bit throughout the groove that one sounds like real drums maybe it's real drums this one is going to be very hard to replicate it sounds like it was probably played the whole thing in real time maybe even on a real drum kit. And if that was not played on a real drum kit, that is some masterful programming right there. I don't even know what to tell you about this one other than like th this section here and this section here, it's kind of uh, a roller coastering, almost swaying out a little bit, trying to almost losing <laughs> the rhythm, but then getting back into center. And last one, Fittingly is called one.
nothing spectacularly new about the hi-hats and the snares in here that we haven't talked about before. The rim shots are, are slightly behind. The velocity of the hi-hats has a pattern to it. If there's something from the hi-hats that you can uh, borrow from here that I noticed uh, happens sometimes is have a look at this pattern. This one is the closest to being on the one, but it's slightly behind. This one is also slightly behind. So uh, beat two within the bar is slightly behind. This one is the same amount of lagging behind. Beat four is lagging behind just as much as beat two on the hi-hats. Oh, the third one is lagging the most. So it goes there and there is, is kind of a micro version of, of what happened in, uh, in African rhythms. It is straying a little bit from the rhythm, but just enough to get back on track without sounding weird. It, it just sounds like there's flavor in it. Here's also a lesson to be learned if you haven't observed and learned this by yourself when you're programming drums, when you're uh, recording them, sequencing them and banging it on the pads or something and ending up with this. Sometimes when we have this funky hi-hat pattern going, a very nice contrast to that can be to have these almost stiff sounding kicks. And Dilla does this a lot. It's like boom, 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 boom. He does that every time it goes around to a new bar. So right here, it has that swing in the groove, but here it's almost a straight boom, 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 boom. Like that. That's something very uh, effectful that you can do with your drums sometimes. So yeah, actually, uh, these are things that kind of inherently we know about a lot of the time. But getting the evidence visually right in front of you, like like this, it makes uh, it makes a lot of sense. You can hear it and see it in your head, sort of. But uh, we can actually pick this apart and learn a lesson or two about making a little bit more better drum patterns you know what i'm saying so especially if you're a newbie when it comes to making beats you can learn hopefully a lot from this i hope you enjoyed this video we're left fielding it a little bit you know what i'm saying uh shout out to all my patrons the people in the black hole the legacy of dilla and everyone involved with it when it comes to hip-hop beats i don't know how you can do it better than dilla did it and a big part of it is of course the groove and uh, okay bye bye